Okay, I've had a few different people ask me what these posts are for that are in uh, various beds around my raised bed gardens. And what this is, is in previous years, these posts solved two problems, specifically dealing with growing corn in raised beds. If you use like a raised bed soil mix or something similar to that nature, what you find out is when the corn gets about two or three feet tall, the soil is so loose that if it rains and you get a storm, it can blow your corn over. And another issue too is when the corn is ready to harvest, it often will get uh, destroyed by raccoons. So I put four fence posts around these beds and I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I'm about to show you how we solve both problems. One being the corn getting blown over in high winds or, or thunderstorms that usually happen in the summertime. And the other is raccoons destroying your corn. So give me a few minutes and I'll finish setting this up so you can see. And take two. So apparently my phone shut off during the middle of the recording and I totally missed the last part of me putting this fence up. Anyways, I got the rest of the fence up now. I wanna show you what's going on here. You can see the zip ties there used to hold it together. You can see that I basically just spliced various sections of it together if the fence wasn't long enough. Now two issues that are gonna happen is along the bottom. This will be loose along the bottom. And the way that I fixed that is I went down, I basically pulled the fence out and I say, can a raccoon fit in there? Probably not. But if it can, I take filled fence staples and I staple it down. See, I added the staple there. There's actually one that didn't get all the way put in. But I put filled fence staples in about every two or three feet. What that does is that creates an area that a raccoon really isn't going to want to try to crawl into. He's going to get stuck if he does. So that's one problem or one solution to the bottom of the fence is still loose. Along the posts, I put three or four zip ties to hold the fence against the post. I stretch it tight. Now there's another section down here that I did a little bit differently. And that is... You could also take the fence and bend it over. So see it comes down to the ground, then it comes out about a foot. Now what I do for that is I use landscape staples and I just put it somewhere. This is actually kind of hard to do in this bed because, and then I just shove it in the ground till it's flat. Now the raccoon comes along, he's probably not gonna be able to get in there. This one actually needs a second one down here on this end that was still a little bit loose. I mean, the fence will come up in an inch or two, but if I put a second one in there and maybe another one up here, that's going to take care of that problem. So once this is all done, you've basically stopped raccoons from getting under the fence. They can't go through the fence because this is like a one by one or a 2.2 or one by one inch or a two by two inch hole. So they're not going to get through there. They could theoretically climb the fence. But last year when I tested this, what I found out is, you can notice that this is pretty loose. Just the nature of the fence. Pretty much all the way down through there because it's stretched. What happens is they'll start to climb up and when they hit this really loose spot, it scares them and they just climb back down. So I haven't had one yet get in this. Uh, this field fence I think is 48 inches tall. The posts are also 48 inches tall. And that's going to take care of the problem. Now, what you're going to need, you're going to need four T-posts for each bed that has corn in it that you're going to do this with. One T-post in each corner. The next thing you're going to have to do, you're going to have to measure your beds. This is a four by eight bed. That means I've got eight on this side, eight feet long, eight feet long, four feet wide, four feet wide. Add all that together. That comes to 24 feet. That means to do this one bed, I need 24 feet of chicken wire, four T-posts, some fence staples, 
and some landscape staples, depending on which method you're going to use to secure it at the bottom. You have to do that for each bed. Now, if you notice over here, this bed don't have any post, but it's got corn in it. That's because I also do a rotation. Even though I had corn in this bed last year, I went ahead and put corn in it this year. I'll rotate this one out next year. But this bed, this is the first year it's had corn in it. So I'll go ahead and put the post in the ground, get this secured up the same way. Last year, this bed is the one that had the corn in it. This year it's got something different. So that's what I mean by rotation. Sometimes I'll grow back to back, like I did two years in this one bed of corn, but I won't do three back to back. This is the first year of that one. This one had corn in it, I think a year or two, and I finally rotated it out. Um, but that will take care of your raccoon problems getting in your corn and destroying it. As far as the wind getting blown down to the ground, if you look at this, this corn that's on this edge can only get blown over to where the fence is at in either direction. And what that does is, even if the corn does get blown over, it won't get blown over level with the ground. Your plants aren't going to get uprooted when it gets blown over. They're going to get blown over a little bit. They always recover from it. Now, if you go by the lengthwise, they could theoretically get blown over because there's actually enough room in the length of this bed for it to get blown over and get blown over all the way to the ground. The problem is, it's kind of like a domino. On this end, or on either end, the corn's only going to fall so far. Then the corn next to it's only going to fall up against it. The corn next to that's only going to fall up against that. So it's kind of like a domino effect, but it still can't fall all the way over and get uprooted, which is what kills your corn from thunderstorms. So this takes care of the wind problem and raccoons both. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like these kind of tips, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell. I post videos quite often, this year at least, and uh, I've got a lot of information to share. So thanks for watching.